his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and in six, six days you shall labor, labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, and the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it.
just the just the elders. <clears throat> All right, young people. Any more young people in the congregation? Please come forward. We're going to have a special prayer for you. And right after we're done, y'all can take a seat down here because we have a short video to watch. Okay. okay. Come on. You can give this. Father, we thank you safely through another week, Father, you brought us on our way. Lord, it was only by your grace that we made it here for 2020. Amen. Father, our young people, our youth, they're not the future, they're the present of the church. Amen, sir. We pray, Father, for them in a very special way. We live in a very sick, sin, polluted world where many young people are losing their lives. Some can't even go to school safely. They go and they come back home. Father, from a very special way, we want to rededicate these young people to you. We pray that each of them, Father, will be sheltered by your grace, kept in your mercy, protected by your holy angels, covered with the blood of Jesus. Father, we pray for each parent, Father, who have dedicated them to your service as well. The modern-day Annas who are saying we're going to take them to the temple of the Lord and let them serve. Father, we pray for them that you would give them wisdom to continue to teach them and raise them and nurture the admonition of the Lord. Father, in a very special way, I pray for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon their lives starting now. Will you please give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding? the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. We pray, Father, that they will be the hell and not the tail. In their academics, Father, we pray that you will give them the intelligence to always excel. And I pray that their future will be bright. And I pray that their protection will be made sure. And we pray as we combine our faith on their behalf that their salvation is also secure. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.
now time to collect the tiny note. I will read a passage from First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 11 to 13. Bless our you, Lord God, of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Your, yours, O oh Lord, is greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty of all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O oh Lord, and you are exalted as head of us all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might, in your hand is to make great and to give strength to all. Now therefore, our God, and we thank you and praise your glorious name.
find that he's willing to serve for the principle of righteousness. Forgive us of our sins, Father, and help us to hear your voice at this moment. As you speak through the mind and the mouth of these young people, we pray as adults that we will hear your voice in spite of them. Lord, at this time, we please anoint their lips that all things that need to be said will be said with power and will come directly from your heavenly Father. May Jesus be revealed to each one of us today. May we come to a deeper walk with him. In Jesus' name we pray.
bunch of pain and suffering and seem to be a little bit of nerves and shit. God's ultimate desire for all of us is to love and experience love in its absolute fullness. Fullness. Listen to what Jesus says for the moment. In John 15, 10 it says, If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. 1 John 5, 2 also says, By this we know that we love the children of God, and we will bless God, and keep his commands. 1 John 5, 3 says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commands, and his commands are not grievous. Thank you for listening, and God bless. Who is love? Hello, my name is Andres, and I'm going to speak to you today about who is love. We have just heard about the Ten Commandments show us what love is, because they are transcripts of the character of God. I want to start by asking this question, who is God? There are many who believe that God is just a force, or a higher power, or just an idea. But what does the Bible tell us about who God is? Open your Bible with me to 1 John 4, 8. It says, Anyone who does not love does not know God. Love is God, and God is love. Whenever we think of love, we must think of God, because He is the very essence of love and nature, and He is the author of love, and apart from God, love cannot exist. Every decision and action that makes that makes it from God is rooted in God's love, for you and for me. Now, let us ask another question. What did God do to show his love to humanity? To answer this one, may we now turn in our Bibles to Romans 5, 8. It says, So God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God loves us while we didn't know him. He loves us in spite of who we are or what we have done. His love is other-centered, selfless, and unconditional. It is because God so loved that he gave the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ. The greatest demonstration of love of God can only be seen through the sacrifice of his only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us now read this next few verses. John 3, 16. For God loved the world in this way, gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Under the one, first of John 4 10 says, And this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. First of John 3.16 also says, This is how we have come to know love. He, Jesus, laid down his life for us. We should also lay down our lives for our brothers. In the book, Steps to Christ, page 15, paragraph 2, by Alan G. White says, Such love is without a parallel. Children of the heavenly king, precious sons, seen for the most of solemn meditation, the matchless love of God for a world that does not love him. The thought has a subduing power upon the soul and brings the mind into captivity of the will of God. The more we study the divine character and the light of the cross, the more we see mercy, tenderness, and forgiveness blended with equity and justice. And the more clearly we descend innumerable evidence of the love that is infinite and tender pity surpassing a mother's yearning sympathy for the wayward child. Thank you for listening. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. We are going to talk about how to love as God loves. We have learned what is love and who is love. God is love. And one example is Jesus Christ who died on the cross to save us all. And 
now the last question is, how will we love? Let us go back to our opening text found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Naturally, we don't know how to love. Often, we love people because of certain conditions or some selfish interest. Our manner of love is often tamed through some underlying selfish motive. We tend to love only those who love us. This is not the kind of love God wants us to display. The, the word love is originally translated to the word as Jesus. Agape, which means God's love. Agape is not a agape is a selfless love. It has nothing to do with me, me, but rather it focuses simply upon the glory of God and the benefit of others. First Corinthians thirteen tells us how we show our love. By being patient. This means waiting a long time without whining or complaining. <laughs> By being kind, even when someone is not kind to you. By not being envious. That means by being happy when kind things kind to you. By not good things happen to someone else and not being upset that it didn't happen to you. By being behaved, by, sh by sharing and not being selfish, by feeling calm and not being quick to become, to quick to become angry. By telling the truth, the Bible also tells us love never ends, love lasts forever. This is the kind of love that God is calling us to love. But how do we love in this way? This can only be done as we accept the love of God into our hearts. It's, it's only by the love of God we begin to love as God loves. The Bible says, First John 4, verse 19, We love him because he loved us first. We must first accept the love of God into our hearts by faith and meditate daily upon his great love for, for, for us through the reading of the scriptures and a constant prayer life. And this will cause us to love God and to love each other. Jesus said, First John 13, verse 34, I give you a new commandment, to love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. First John 4, verse 7, Dear friends, let us love one another because love is from God. And everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. First John 4, verse 11. Dear friends, if God loves us in this way, we, we also must love one another. The love of God will cause us to obey Him and to keep His Ten Commandments, Jesus said. John 15, verse, verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. First John 5, verse 2 through 3. By this we know that the love of the children of God 
this opening year. Thank you guys for everything you do and the awesome work for God. Only heaven can be paid for what you just did. I just want to share a few words with you, Mark. Every other Friday we meet downstairs and we have to connect. We have, this is not even half of it. There's a whole other group that are not consistently in church. And they all came from the community. And they come here because they're experiencing something special. Amen. They get to meet with each other. They get to spend time together. They get the word of God. We also feed them. And uh, they get to be themselves at Youth Connect. And they enjoy being down there. Uh, one of the issues we're facing right now is that we need help. Uh, it's me, my wife, Elder Johnny, and most time he can't come because he's on his work schedule. And, um, and Elder Marty. Um, it's us three. Sister Alba is also in there, but she simply has some issues she's dealing with. So pretty much we need more, more hands on deck for these young people. Um, so if God is pressing on your heart to be a part of ministry in the church, considering the youth, um, we, we're looking for more help down there. Um, one thing I would ask you to do is consider praying for them. And get close to them. They are here and they want to be serving. We do guys in church service. Amen. 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 And what we're hoping to do this year is to get them up there more often. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be seeing more of these smiling, beautiful faces ministering to us. Um, hopefully, every part of it. I think that's the goal. And um, Kelly, is there anything else to say? Wow, I mean, there's not much more to say. I just feel blessed. I'm very happy that I can see how the young people are blossoming and how they're maturing. You can hear it in their voices. You can hear the confidence as they speak. I mean, there's nothing more reassuring to see young people standing for God. You know, the energy, the talent, the things that they have that they can bring to a church brings life. And I implore everyone to please continue to support them. Every time you see them, mentor them, be a, a good advisor to them when you see them. As you know, young people, they yeah, have quite a bit quite of energy. And it takes a lot. It takes a lot of patience to um, deal with this kind of special ministry. But you know what? Our God is good. Because these young people that sometimes you see running and jumping and playing, acting crazy, look at them now, standing and, you know, giving a wonderful testimony of how wonderful God is. So my hope for 2020, a new year, is to have our young people to be more upfront, to do more, be more involved. And with the help of uh, my brother, Alan James, and Elder Marty, we're going to make sure we ch- keep pushing for that. So keep us in prayer. Keep our young people in prayer too as well. And let's give a big amen again to our young people again. Amen. amen. Well, I tell you, I am very happy that the church is also being very supportive to our young people. And also showing wonderful patience too. I want to close to have benediction with these words. I want you to not only keep us in prayer, but keep praying for our young people. As you know, the world is out there trying to pull them away from here. So we have to get on our knees and pray for our young people so they don't get distracted with what the outside world has. Let us have prayer. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we could be here this morning to see our young people stand out and perform for your glory. We hope that everyone was blessed that we're able to see the young people. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to uplift them, give them confidence, give them strength, and we pray, Lord, that you continue to administer and mentor to them so that they can be confident in your name. Lord, wherever they may be, let them to always know that they are a child of God. Whether they're in the communities, whether they're on the playgrounds, whether they're on school grounds, 
always help them to remember to put you first. It is you, Lord, who says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through the Lord, through God who strengthens me. And we pray that you will in, embed, embed this theory in their minds, Lord, so that they will always know that you are there with them. They are not alone. We are not alone because we have a merciful, loving Savior that is here for us. We pray for our young. We pray for our church members. We pray for all those that are in need as well. We pray for those that are sick. We raise um, our beloved brother Chris to you at this time. We know the loss that he's experiencing. We, we keep him in prayer to his well too, Lord. Lord, we pray for all those that are in despair. We pray for them. Lord, we ask that we leave this place to help us to be unified and strengthened by your love and your grace and your mercy. Help us to put you first in everything that we do. And may you help our young people, guide them, give them direction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.